Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got a long term review of the Feelylec FY6900 signal generator. Now I got hold of this last May and since then it's featured in an awful lot of the videos that you've seen and I've certainly used it in lots of experimentation and um, checking of things that I've been doing so it's definitely been earning its keep. I got it from Banggood and originally I ordered a slightly lower spec uh, model of a different make and I discovered after I'd ordered it that it wasn't going to be in stock for something like six weeks so I went back to Banggood and uh, I knew this one was in stock so I decided to spend the extra and get it so I'm glad I did because I've been very pleased with it uh, and there's a couple of very good videos that are worth looking at well I, I mean there's quite a few videos about this um, signal generator but certainly SDG Electronics's review is very good as is his modifications that he's done to it too um, but as I say it's been a lot of use to me and I'm very pleased with the purchase so I'll have a close look in a moment but as you can see it takes pride of place here um, in my well, on my workbench, radio shack, call it what you will. I've attached it permanently, well not permanently, just got a couple of screws here to hold it in place because it's quite light and I don't want it sliding about when I'm disconnecting BNCs etc. Uh, but she sits there and produces waves, I've just got a couple of them showing up here on the scope at the moment and as well as having uh, a, quite a few built-in uh, waveforms it's got I think um, something like 50 or 60 arbitrary waves that you can program as well with the software should you so desire. That's not something I've had any need for so it's not something that uh, I've, I've made use of but certainly that um, that option does exist and sitting here as it does sort of right in my eye line it's really useful to be able to see the display and to work away with it quite well. So let's, um, let's have a look at the details of this uh, little machine. OK, well here's the um, FY6900 and uh, the front panel, um, I think, uh, quite reasonably laid out. It's got this uh, foot which will swing round if you need it. I actually drilled a couple of holes there so I could mount it so it, would, it wouldn't slide about on, my, on the shelf that I keep it on. One thing to say about this is it's incredibly light. It really doesn't feel like there's very much in it and of course there doesn't need to be very much in it these days, gone are the days of big mains transformers and things. So you've got on off switch, now that on off switch is a soft on off switch but if you do turn off with that, that switch the settings are kept. On the rear next to the power input is a hard on off switch and if you switch off with that when you switch back on it actually uh, comes back to its default setting which is channel 1 at uh, 10 kilohertz. Um, so at least it starts up with a waveform and actually I've discovered that's actually quite useful when you're um, just trying something out, at least you know there's a signal there. So yeah, we've got BNCs for channels 1 and 2 and we've got the counter BNC going in, uh, various buttons etc. These are soft keys which depend on what the menu is going to display. Once you've got the hang of how it's set out and you've spent a little bit of time with it, it's actually okay from a usability point of view. Could they have made it slightly more intuitive? Yes, they probably could, but it was cheap and I do mean really cheap. For what you get I'm actually delighted with mine. There is a particularly good video on SDG Electronics, in fact there's a couple actually. There's one where he reviews it and does a teardown and there's another one uh, where he um, replaces the, the power supply um, he wasn't too happy about the way the earth is connected from the earth pin in the back to the outside of the BNCs. Um, so I'll put a link up there to those videos to have a look so you can have a look at them. Um, on the back, you've already had a quick glance, we've got obviously the mains input. There's a, a hole there that looks like it's for a fan, there isn't a fan, you could install one. Uh, in fact if you look at those videos I just mentioned you'll see that he has indeed got a fan installed. Got the USB port which you can use with software and you've got the TTL out that gives you the various markings. Uh, I just put a bit of uh, dark marker on here so that I could actually make out the writing a little bit better when I was busy using it. And there's four BNC inputs. Um, so you've got, this is an input to, which you can use as modulation if you want to. Um, 
uh, for the VCO uh, and this is the VCO input 0 to 5 volts to control it. I'm going to show you how I actually use that function um, uh, a little bit later on. And these two are synchro sockets. This uh, output synchro produces a, a pulse which is in time with the frequency on channel 1 and that one presumably takes an input pulse so you could synchro um, a number of these machines together. That's not something uh, I'm likely to do because I've only got one. So, um, a nice little uh, looking unit and as I say I drilled a couple of holes there so I could stop it sliding about because it is very light so if you've got a, a slippy surface with it on yeah it'll slide about a bit. There are of course plenty of reviews of this signal generator out on the net so I don't want to um, waste your time by repeating the things that have been shown there. But essentially you've got your two channels, one and two. Uh, a green backlit button means that they're both enabled. This is one and two. Uh, this is the default frequency it starts up on which is uh, 10 kilohertz. And if you've got um, frequency selected, whichever bands you're in, by using the rotary control you can change the frequency. If I come back to channel one I can change the frequency of, of channel one. Um, nice clean waveform. If you then start stepping through the type of wave you can obviously get your square waves um, and there's all sorts of different waveforms that start to appear and again you can set either channel ind independently of these um, which is obviously quite a handy function if you need to uh, completely different waveforms. So there we go, that's the general arrangement um, and the display is actually, once you've got used to its idiosyncrasies, um, actually quite good. Uh, it's on occasions you do wonder quite why they did it that way and some of the abbreviations are a bit odd but it's just practice really. Um, and I think it's easy to criticise something which has got so many features and say yeah well it's not very good. Yeah but actually it wasn't a great deal of money and there's no way on earth I could have afforded a professional version of a of a signal generator that has the features that this, this one's got. So actually I'm, I'm really pleased with it and I've made uh, quite a lot of use of it. Uh, this is the 50 megahertz version uh, but she does um, very nicely and uh, pleased with my purchase. One of the things I do want to talk about is the uh, VCO mode that's available on the FY6900 VCO voltage control oscillator. Uh, this won't be of use to everybody but if you uh, want to be able to control a swept range of frequencies actually it's quite handy. The synchro output from the FY6900 produces a pulse uh, in synchro with the, the frequency you've got set for the waveform and I didn't want that, that pulse was no use to me. I wanted a pulse each time we had a sweep and I wasn't able to do that. I know some signal generators are able to do that because I wanted to use that pulse to, to as a trigger for the scope. So um, just to demonstrate to you how I eventually achieved that and there is a video about um, about me using that for alignment purposes. I'll put a link up the top there um, about producing bowed plots. Um, and the way I set it up was first of all to go to channel 2 here and on channel 2 I've got a ramp wave set up with a very low frequency of 3 Hertz and I've got it going from uh, with a 5 volt uh, amplitude I've picked 5 volts because the VCO input in the manual, and there's very scant information in the manual about this, but the VCO input talks about a maximum of 5 volts. I've also got an offset of 5 volts because by default it would of course produce, the function generator would of course produce a, a ramp that crossed 0. And what I wanted was something that started at 0 and went up to 5 and dropped back. So I've got that and I've got that currently hooked up to channel 2 of the scope, which you can see there. Um, it's not um, synchro because I, normally I would fit that into the external trigger but here I just wanted to show you the ramp waveform. So on that, that T piece there I've got an input to the scope here and there I've got an input going back to the VCO input on the back of the FY6900. And then what you can do is you can actually use the VCO function, you can use that ramp to 
control the sweep. So I've got a sweep set up here between 0.1 hertz and, and 60 hertz uh, for no other reason than it allows you to visualize what's going on. So if I turn on channel 1 um, you should now be able to see um, there we go should now be able to see what's going on. I'm just going to pause the scope so you can actually see that a little bit better. Right, so what you've got is you've got zero volts and then that slowly rises up over a third of a second to five volts and drops back down. And as you can see the sweep starts here and this is low frequency increasing more rapidly and you can obviously pick the range of the sweep to suit yourself. I just did this so you could visualize it. Uh, but what I've actually got there is the signal generator effectively controlling itself with channel 2 because um, it would seem seem by default that sweep output and VCO output both come out of channel 1 and channel 2 is completely independent of that so that's that's quite a handy facility if you want to be able to use um, VCO and the arrangement I had here was that I've got just currently got it feeding into channel 2 so that you can see the ramp waveform I'm producing but if I feed that into the external trigger and then instruct the scope to figure, trigger off a falling edge that waveform will effectively um, pour, appear to have paused and then you can you can see the display um, and then of course you would because you don't need to see channel 2 you could then uh, make your channel 1 waveform a great deal bigger and to produce a bode plot I was actually lowering the channel down so you were just seeing effectively the top half and that looks a little bit more like a, a spectrum analyzer display might look if there was um, some kind of uh, filtering going on. So there you go that's the VCO it does work and you can use the signal generator to control its own VCO. OK, well that's almost it for another video. This time it's been uh, quite a short and snappy one, a little bit of a long term review. Hopefully uh, you found it useful. I'm certainly pleased with, uh, with the Signal Jenny. It's doing the biz and it uh, appears in lots of videos. I'll put a few links here to some of the videos that actually uh, make use of it so you can see it in action. Um, cheap and cheerful, which is a phrase I often use. Uh, I'm actually delighted with it. Uh, I definitely do electronics on a budget and I've really got no complaints with that. So if it uh, looks like something you'd use then I'd encourage you to go for it. don't think you'll be disappointed. Thanks very much for watching. If you've liked it please click the thumbs up. If not you can click the thumbs down. Either way, appreciate your time. Um, be great if you could subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.